another episode of this series. Do we have a name for this series yet? <laughs> Not yet. Well, we need help with that. So if you have an idea of what the series should be called, you know, you can comment down below. And uh, whoever has the best comment, and we choose that name for the name of this series, we're going to give you a care kit for your instrument. Sound like a good idea? Yeah. So we're going to give you a care kit plus a limited edition Brighton Music Center t-shirt. What? Yeah. So make sure you comment below. And that way we can find a name for this series and we don't have to call it that series. That'd be a good thing. Thanks. So today we are talking about string instruments. And we have a special guest with us. Our first special guest. Uh, this is Noah. For those of you who don't know Noah. Noah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I have been playing cello for 12 years now. I know, like a whole, maybe older than some of you watching. It's nuts. Um, so I don't consider myself a string professional, but I know a little bit about strings. Cool, that's great. So full disclosure, he is my son, if you haven't noticed. Uh, we're sorry for those people. So, what are we going to talk about today? That's a good question. What are we talking about today? Jen? Oh my gosh, well I guess, where do we start? This is just a couple of uh, string instruments, and then we also do have one over there. But let's just talk about what they are, um, and what the differences between them are, just so we all know. Because these two look very similar here today. So. Um, this one, Noah, what have we got? It's a violin. It's a full-size violin. Uh, and it's, yeah, so it's a violin. Uh, this is an overfed violin. It's the viola, which we don't need. So it just looks like it's a bigger violin, but there's other things too, right? Yeah. So it's not just that it's bigger. So if you no. take a look at those two, you can see that one's big, one's tall. Um, but the other difference is how deep they are. Yes, and right. different tuning. So Right, there is a different the tuning system. Violin is E, A, D, G, and the viola is A, D, G, C. So you get a lower note, the low C on the viola that you don't get on the violin. Right. Then also you have some weird clefs to deal with too. We yes. need to talk about no, that no, today. Talk about that. So, scare people so you have a higher music. sound here, and a lower sound here. So, all the instruments also use a bow, yes. right? Yes. So, so what, what are bows made of typically? Bows are typically made out of horse hair. Now, right. there are about some special new bow technologies being invented that have synthetic hair, but right now we're still on, not even close to transitioning to that. So, it's horse hair. Yes. So, if you're watching this, just imagine like someone going with a pair of like hair scissors and just going, snip, snip, now you have a haircut, and then yeah. putting it on your bow. Yeah, it doesn't or, hurt the horse. No, no, it's, it's perfectly fine. So, the, the uh, bow makes the sound on the instrument, right? Yeah. So, but when you first get an instrument, there might not, it might not make any noise, right? It might just slide across the strings and not make any noise at all. Well, this one's done a pretty good job. Well, that one has what they call rosin on it, right? So rosin comes in a little cake like this, and it would come with your rental instrument if you've run, run it for Bright Music Center or any other reputable company. And this is actually what goes on the bow to make the bow grippy, yeah. to make it pull on the strings, right? Because the, the hair by itself is not going to do that, no. right? You have to have something on the bow to make it work. So now there's always a question of how do you put rosin on a bow? That's a good question. No, I will answer that. Okay, so you have to scratch the rosin, which is like really scary because you think like, oh, it's such a pretty nice little cake. Whenever it comes, it's like all shiny. No, you gotta scratch it, and that's okay. And some pieces will fall off. Don't worry about it. It's it's all good. Uh, so then, once you scratch it, you take it and push it up against the bow hair, and do a full swipe, and just to swipe up, swipe down, and do that two or three times, and that should be enough rosin. Now, if you over rosin the bow you get, there will start to be rosin buildup on the face of the instrument and on the strings. So you don't want to over, over rosin and you can even over rosin to the point that when you go to start playing it creates puffs of smoke. So that might sound cool but that's too much rosin, don't do that. Right, you can actually see on this violin right here, you can see those white spots, uh, white spots right there, that's that's rosin buildup, right? Yeah. So that bow might have a little bit too much rosin at this point, but that's the way that rosin works, so that's cool. So we've talked about the violin, we've talked about the viola. There is one more instrument that we're gonna talk about today. And it's the cello. It's the cello. So, big guy here. 
Let's move that. Yes. You've got him? Yes. So that's the big boy there. That's the cello. So that is also a full size cello. Um, <laughs> and it works the same way as the other instruments, right? Yep. And a uh, very pretty sounding instrument. Uh, uses a bow also. It looks like it's heavy. It's really not heavy because it's empty inside. Yeah, it's all hollow. So. It's actually a very light instrument to carry around. And I know that you, as a young boy, took it on the school bus. Took it on the school bus, back and forth to school every day. And uh, he made it okay. Yeah. Right? You made yeah. it good. It's probably like a, your own like best pal, like yeah. sitting to you. Well, sitting, yeah, I had to do that. And I couldn't wear it as a backpack because I was so tall, even as like a fourth grader. Oh, yeah. The whack off the top of door hooks. Right. Now you named your cello too. I did. My first cello name is Bob, and this current day, my cello is still named Bob. So. <laughs> so it's very cute. And you guys have a nice relationship. We do have a nice relationship. That's very nice. Yep. If you've named your instrument already, leave a comment below. <laughs> so, why are my violin pegs slipping? That's a really good question that we need to ask. Okay, so in the winter, uh, usually when that happens, it's in the winter because the humidity is lower in the winter. And so what happens is the wood loses its moisture when the humidity goes down. So the peg holes actually get bigger. So yeah, it's not good. It's so, and some, sometimes if you take it into the music store, uh, they'll help you. There's, there's a something called peg dope that helps the pegs stop from slipping. But usually if you just, if you push while you're turning the peg, it should lock back in. They're pressure fitted, so they should work even when there's little to no humidity in the air. Right, I mean, this is something that hasn't changed in the, what, 400, 500 years yeah. that violins have been around, the way that the peg boxes are put away. So the peg actually just slides through, it's just a screw, it's just a piece of wood. So it should friction fit in there, but if not, uh, if it's having problems swiping, as you said, you can bring it into a music store and they can fix it up for you. If you just push it a little bit harder on it, yeah. not too hard, but if you push a little bit harder on it, it should tighten up. Tighten up. Now, are there ways to prevent the humidity from going away from your instrument? There are. So this is called a damp it. Uh, it you fill it with water, you fill a sink with water and run it under the water, and it has a sponge inside of it, and the sponge collects water, and then you take the damp it and you put it in one of the F holes until it goes all the way down into this black part. And then, this is not while you're playing. You take it out while you're playing, but when you're done practicing, you're supposed to fill that up with water. Make sure to wipe with a paper towel the excess water off of the dampet because water on wood is never good. That's why mom makes you use a coaster. And what else did you find in the package? Oh, also, this was cool. This has changed since when I had a dampet, my first dampet. Ah, so you put that in the case. Extr examine it pink. Okay, cool. So they actually included a little paper sheet that gives you the percentage hum of humidity on this sheet. So, um, so you can tell what what the how humidity, dry the yeah, case how is. Dry the case right. Is. So if it's pink, you've really got some issues, and you need to get more humidity. What happens in the winter, and the reason this happens is also the other thing that happens is not only outside is there less moisture, but inside the house is more, less moisture. When, they, when the furnace is running and actually pushing that hot air through the house, it actually sucks the humidity out of the air. So sometimes houses are really, really dry and getting moisture into your instrument. And what happens also with the peg slipping, the other thing that can happen is actually the instrument can crack. And we've seen that before too, where the instrument has gotten so dry and the face of it is actually cracked. And at that point, you've got some serious issues. So these dampets aren't very expensive. How much are they? They're, well, $17. So putting that kind of thing inside your instrument, inside your case while you're not playing it, is a, is a good investment as far as keeping your instrument safe long term. Yeah. And there's, there's different options when it comes to it. Uh, D'Addario makes a one that you use syringe to fill it, and that just lives inside your case. It Velcros inside the case. Uh, so that's another option. There's yeah, we have some other ones from D'Addario that have humidipacks inside. Yes. And they're actually two-way humidifiers. So if it's too much moisture, it sucks it out, and there's not enough moisture, it puts it back. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, so I it actually keeps the case. Yeah, you should actually probably yeah. get one of those. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching another edition of this web series. And remember, leave a comment below and tell us what this should be called, and you'll win some free stuff. Yeah, we'll um, send it to you. Yeah.
it'll be super fun um looking forward to more videos always and always 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 if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do that and ring the notification bell because you don't want to miss any new information that comes about what the uh and what instrument that you play thanks for joining us Noah. thank, thank you Noah. For having high me. five yeah oh yeah